Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. I just want to say a big thank you to all the support I got from the last one I made. Um, it's very much appreciated and welcome. I think a few people thought I was bashing Engage, but really it was never my intention. Um, I was always planning on doing a one year review and I just thought I'd do the negatives first. So this video is all about the positives about the Engage. Um, I absolutely lo love Engage. It works for me, it was the right choice for me. Um, and these are the reasons why. And the best thing for me of why I like Engage is the size of it. Although I, in my last video I sort of mentioned of why that could be a bit of an issue, really the fact that you can just fit so much in a small space is just so handy for me. You may remember my last layout, which was double O one. Uh, on the same five foot by three foot board, I could only have first and second radius curves. The straight pieces weren't that long. Um, I think I could only have a free coach car um train couldn't really fit anything into a station i was incredibly limited of what i could do um and that was modeling a branch line i would i could never do a main line um but in get engage i could do a main line no problem um i'm actually using third and fourth radius curves but they could be greater um i wanted to have the trains going through the landscape so that's why i've allowed a lot of uh, scenery space for either side of the track um, and i just feel like my scope of what i can model is just so much greater um, on this layout Obviously, I've got the main line running. Um, I've got a little branch line that, although it doesn't go anywhere, it is there. Um, so, therefore, I can have an end-to-end -end layout incorporated in this. Um, my DMU just goes from the station to the branch line. That's sort of its little job. Um, the other side of the layout, there's either going to be a little DMU depot or prob not really a TMD, but that sort of a small-scale um, sort of setup perhaps some sidings to store some stock i've got you know i've got options there as well as uh just the trains running through the landscape and i just couldn't do that in double row in this size and you're probably thinking well if you haven't got space for a layout why are you bothering well i have got space i've got a spare room but i don't want the layout to take over my life there's times where i just don't have time for it i work a 70 hour week and I could be up away from home up to three to four nights a week. And then on the weekends, I've got a family to tend to. I just haven't got time to mess around with the layout. So I sort of had a plan in advance of me time. So although I'm very lucky I could afford to, I just don't want the layout in the way. I don't want it to take over my house. So having a five foot free board that goes under the bed, if I don't work on it, I don't feel guilty about it. So... The fact I can store it away is a big plus for me as well. And I think a lot of people would uh, echo this. Another thing is quality. You have to admire how well these small trains run. They are quality models that are not tall at all. There's weight and a good feel to them. From afar, they look convincing and up close, a detailed model. You have to remember for the size of them. Detail like this is remarkable. I always upload pictures of my layout to Facebook and people always comment how fantastic Old Oak Common looks. So it is convincing people that there is a train passing the Cornish coast in a somewhat realistic manner. The quality overall is very good. No budget models as such, with all the technology of new releases at a better price. I don't think I could have a set of old Oak Common in double oak gauge for £180 delivered. The availability is good as well. In the one year I've had Engage, I've managed to collect four trays from my layout, all in GWR livery, fit in my era, three of them being brand new. And there's scope for more as well. They now released the 158 from Graham Farris and GWR livery, and I've got my eye on it. And it's just nice to know that I've got scope to expand. It's something to look forward to with new releases. It just makes me feel like a bit part of the community a bit more. In Double O, you know, the things were just a bit too expensive. I didn't have the space to sort of run it to give the locomotive justice. And here, I'm just a bit more motivated. So it just is all good. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you agree with the points I've made. But that's the reasons why Engage works for me and why I enjoy the gauge so much. I'd like to know whether you agree with it and if you enjoy modeling Engage too. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's left a comment in the last few videos, um, particularly the last video. I had some great feedback and some great help with the track um, of why I was having a few running issues. And I really want to thank you for that because it's made such a difference. Um, I want to say thank you to all the subscribers that uh, have subscribed to me, past and present. Um, I'm just really, really grateful for it all and all the good uh, feedback that I've gotten recently. So, um, 
Hopefully see you again soon. I've got a few update videos I want to show you for a few of the things I've done with the layout. I've got some stuff on order as well, so I look forward to doing a bit more and showing you that. Uh, I've got a few products in mind. Um, I want to put lighting into my coaches, put a few people in there as well, just basically get the layout to a good standard. Um, I'm also thinking that perhaps next winter of building a new layout, one that goes around the room. Um, so uh, I'm really looking forward to that, whether it happens or not, but uh, I really like you on board and uh, your help and feedback for that one as well. So um, thanks ever so much and I hope to see you again soon.